Hello everybody, my name is uh, Peter Jide. As you can tell, uh, I'm not British and I'm not from the US. I am Swedish and I have got diabetes type 1. And I also uh, work at Beat Diabetes Foundation. I am a board member and I speak a lot about diabetes. The second person uh, you're watching is the most important one today. His name is Andrei Krolevsky is at Jocelyn Diabetes Center and Harvard Medical School. So I just say hello, uh, Andre. And my first question to you is how come you decided to do your research about uh, my disease, diabetes? Thanks very much for the invitation. And uh, uh, maybe I would I would say a few uh, uh, words before I answer your question. Uh, currently, I'm the professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and also a, a senior investigator at Justin Diabetes Center. And many, many people perhaps didn't have not heard about Jocelyn. So maybe some introduction. It, it, it has been established 120 years ago by the late Dr. Jocelyn, who devoted his life and his medical career to treat patients with diabetes, and particularly those with type 1 diabetes. If we look back, those patients were, had, were, had a very poor prognosis and, and nobody could help them. So that was a foundation for the Jocelyn Diabetes Center. Since then, it has grown. There are two divisions. One is research division, where there are 40 independent investigators who do research on diabetes. One of them is me. And there is clinic division, where there are about 50 doctors who take care of about 20,000 patients with diabetes. So. Uh, I, I'd like to put this in perspective that I am in such place which is perhaps the best in the world to do research, which your question was, how did I get into this research? <laughs> okay. Uh, as you said, uh, I'm not American. <laughs> uh, I'm not speaking English as my native language, I I came from Poland. I received my medical education and training and start research at the Warsaw Medical University. And I started this research interest in diabetes because some of my relatives had diabetes. So I knew about the disease. The other thing which motivated me to do this research was uh, a lack of competitors. <laughs> it means that when I started my research, there was so much research done in humans on late diabetic complications. So that was the area where there was a lot of potential to, to make some uh, discoveries or to do uh, uh, interesting research. Well, this somehow paid off because with time, my research and uh, what I was doing was noticed by investigators at Jocelyn. They invited me to do research fellowship at this institution, at this prestigious institution. And a couple of years later, they offered me permanent position. So this is the way which I ended up at Jocelyn doing research on diabetes. How do you um, how do you find it, uh, Andre? Well, as I mentioned, the, the Jocelyn is perhaps the the uh, the best place to do the research which I am doing because my research is done among patients. We. Uh, and, and my interest primarily, primary interest is in diabetic kidney disease. So 
for some of you who are uh, perhaps have diabetes, diabetic kidney complication uh, is a, a somehow well-known uh, uh, state or, or well-known health problem. Uh, I, I would like to point out that this is uh, also a, a major health problem for the society because cost of treatment of patients with a diabetic kidney disease is enormous. So uh, I develop a research at Jocelyn where I am focusing on studying what is causing diabetic kidney disease in patients, type one and type two. And I, I, I can say that we are making great progress. I have had uh, my uh, diabetes type 1 since 2012, 12, 12. So it's almost nine years uh, now. And uh, all my, uh, all the things I use every day, the insulin gets better, uh, the, uh, the way I monitor my, my blood sugar gets better. But I am so interested in the research to help with other things regarding diabetes. So. Please, you as a professor uh, and me as just a regular Swedish uh, person, can you in a simple way tell me what it is that you are doing and how it will maybe help me and others with diabetes type 1? Well, I, I think that this is a very important question uh, in the sense that we are dealing with significant problems which is not easy to study, particularly animals, because we do not have any animal model for diabetic kidney complications, which we see in, in humans. Mm. So a, our, our research is, is somehow a, a, a very important from the point of view of, as far as finding the answers what to do to reduce risk of diabetic kidney complications in patients who have type 1 and type 2 diabetes okay so this is somehow an introduction and the research which i'm doing is uh, uh, human subject uh, uh, research where we take large group of patients, follow them over time, and monitor who will develop diabetic kidney disease and who did not or have not. So over the last 20 years, I have been conducting study, which is referred to as a Jocelyn kidney study. And we are following about 5,000 patients. And we just uh, finished the, the observation, and now we'd like to find out what are the characteristics of those patients who develop versus those who didn't develop kidney complications. Okay, of course, we look at many different things. Hyperglycemia or glycemia is not the only factor which is determining this. So we are looking for the other factors. And, and here, I, my lab and what I'm doing at Jocelyn, in, in, in my lab, what we are doing at Jocelyn, we tried different approaches. We tested different uh, factors or determinants. And uh, very recently, we started looking at the protein profiles in circulation as well as urine for possible predictors or possible causal factors for the development kidney disease. And here we are making significant findings. This, this approach, which is referred as a protomics approach, is giving us a lot of new, very exciting information, which we would like to explore further. Give me, please, a, a hint, uh, Andre. What is it that you have uh, found so far? 
Well, uh, we may, maybe to 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 somehow uh, uh, make our findings more uh, clearer. I, I'd like to say a few words about the protomic approach. So. Uh, the proteins or interest in proteins as a factors which can contribute to the disease process uh, ha uh, has been known for for decade decades. The best example is discovery of serum cholesterol as a risk for coronary artery disease. Uh, it's predictor and it's the therapeutic targets, and it's great success, okay? But the investigators were studying just one, cholesterol, and they were measuring, and they found that the cholesterol is important. It's very laborious work and very difficult to do, and each time you have to measure one protein on one compound and one assay. Due to current or, or, or new technologies, now we can measure thousand or more thousand or several thousand proteins at once using a, a new proteomics platforms. So our approach is different from the previous one in the sense that we, we study this in humans and we are examining thousands of different proteins which possibly might be related to diabetic kidney disease. And the findings which I'm so, sort of uh, mentioning is uh, that we found 20, 20 circulating proteins out of 1,200, which are strongly, are strongly associated with the development of kidney disease and its progression to end-stage kidney disease. So what is the next step, uh, Andre? Yes, well, I, we are very excited about these findings. And, mm. and, and we have, uh, 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 how to say, many uh, uh, goals, or, uh, and we are very helpful that we will make some uh, major breakthroughs. So the, the, the first thing is that we are looking at the biology, and we hope that we may find out one or two or three proteins which will be as good for diabetic kidney disease as cholesterol is for coronary artery disease. So if we find out such, such proteins, then this opens an area of developing a th therapeutic interventions and new drugs and new interventions. But the other, the other uh, a kind of set of goals is related to, I, I, can, I, I can call this a diagnostic, prognostic, and more developing diagnostic, prognostic, and monitoring markers. This 20, the, the most important thing at this moment, and the Im immediate goal is to develop a platform which will allow us to measure those 21 proteins. And we are already working with the Olink, it's the Uppsala based company to develop this custom made platform. The Olink is a, a great company. They are very, uh, they, they collaborate, we collaborate with them and they are very helpful as far as developing this platform. Once we have this platform, we will do more research to confirm what we found, but also it will be very important at the end to develop a chip which will allow us to diagnose who among patients with diabetes is at risk of developing diabetic kidney disease. So that is the, the, the long-term goal. The, the, the issue which is also uh, going with this is 
that possibly this chip will be able to tell us who will be responding to different renal protective therapies. And this will be kind of a, a, a new precision medicine, which uh, currently is, uh, you know, very uh, uh, important in treatment of cancer, that you have cancer, but cancer can be very heterogeneous process, and you need to find out the right therapy for right uh, processes. So the same would be somehow we'd like to do similar things for diabetic kidney disease. So these are the short-term and long-term goals for, for our uh, uh, research. So uh, I know, uh, of course, that you're in the middle of this and uh, that it takes a while, but uh, if we talk about uh, applying this uh, research in, in a clinical way, uh, what, what could uh, or, or will you be able to do, and when? Well, applying this in a, in clinical setting will depend on uh, two things. One is that we will have a good custom-made platform which will be measuring those twenty-one uh, pro or twenty proteins. That that yeah. is the the, the 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 most important thing at this moment. The next thing is. To use this platform in large number of populations, so young, older individuals, type 1, type 2, uh, uh, in different ethnic groups, to see whether the same proteins will be predicting the development of diabetic kidney disease. So, so we will develop kind of algorithm or formula how to when to diagnose using these measurements we can develop a formula uh, whom to diagnose as uh, predisposed to the kidney disease okay so once we have this then the next step will be to go to the clinic to the uh, patient care and the mm -hmm. doctors uh, will have access to do these measurements using the formulas and also using the platform uh, I have always been taught that the dumb questions are the best one because then you have to explain why. And uh, I have children uh, and I have uh, diabetes type 1, which is genetic. So I think not daily, but sometimes that are they going to get the same disease as I have? Uh, if we if we talk about screening and being able to see who, who will get diabetes type 2 or who will get diabetes type 1 what can you say about that possibility well it, it is very clear that the genetic screening uh, is not uh, uh, kind of very effective is so so people or uh, investigators are trying to use different approaches and one of them is the proteomic approach. It's the same mm -hmm. approach which we are using to screen for patients who are predisposed to diabetic kidney disease. It mm -hmm. means you have to have a patients, or in this, in in the case of type one diabetes, you have to have a a, a population without diabetes, and you follow this for a long period of time. You find out the individuals who progress, develop, and those who didn't, and then look at the profile, proteomics profiles. Those proteomic profiles, once you develop them, can be used for screening tests, to build screening tests. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is significant progress with this regard. So the word is the proteomics approach or proteomics profiling. Uh, Currently, there are uh, proteomics uh, uh, platforms which measure 7,000 proteins. So some of those proteins, I hope, will be very specific and will appear at a very specific time of, of the disease process that they are characteristics for those who will be developing 
a, a type one diabetes, for example, okay, and at that time you can identify, uh, you can select them and possibly apply different therapeutic interventions. So, so the the there are two factors here. One is to identify patients at risk or early stages of type one diabetes, very early stages of diabetes. The tests are accurate, and then you can try different uh, interventions. Once the interventions are uh, effective, then you can introduce to the patient care to the regular screening as we have for some other disease to identify them at early stages. Um, Andre, I'm happy to, to sit here and, and listen to you and I could do that for a while, but uh, uh, um, I'm going to ask you two more questions. And I kicked off uh, as a journalist and have now been working as that for almost 30 years. Uh, I was a sports reporter from the beginning, and then it's always important to reach the finish line. So if I ask you that question about this project and this research, um, would it be possible to answer when you think you will reach the finish line and what have you, um, what have you been able to do then? Well, uh, as it is right now, we we are in very advanced stage of building the uh, uh, the, the platform, uh, which, by the way, we call this Jocelyn Kidney Panel, <laughs> and it will be made by a, as a custom uh, uh, platform by Oling, and I'd mm -hmm. like to emphasize the uh, great contribution. I think that within the next year or two, that platform will be tested are there many uh, co different conditions in different populations. So we are expecting that within three to four years, we will have some form of platform which can be used in clinical setting. And it will be for two purposes. One is that the, the, uh, the doctors, the regular doctors will be able to ask question whether this specific uh, a patient has a, a, a high risk of developing kidney disease or low risk. Once this is done, the next step will be to develop or find out whether this panel, this custom-made chip, can determine who will be responding to very specific renal protective therapies. And this depends very much on the therapies which are available. At this mm -hmm. moment, we have two or three. And I hope that within three or four years, we will be able to say which, who, or uh, what type of patients are responding to one or another, or, or maybe all three. But the new therapies which will be developed well, we need to do more research. So that will take <laughs> uh, take five, ten, or seven years. But I think that the, there will be practical application of our findings within three to four years. And just to put this in, in perspective, um, you know, uh, the greatest prize for research comes from my country. It's the Nobel Prize. Is this something that could be... Uh, uh, worth the Nobel Prize? <laughs> that is very... Uh, uh, thank you very much, Peter. But uh, our research is kind of a, uh, application research. Our discoveries are related to... Uh, I, we have to have discoveries to develop this uh, these platforms, but if we find out that some of these proteins will cure or be effective when modified in prevention, in prevention or curing diabetic kidney disease, well, that would be definitely a, something to 
to think that this would be a major discovery uh, as far as the Nobel Prize. I think that that is uh, uh, really, uh, at, at this moment, it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is to help patients. I agree with you. Uh, and I could uh, very well be, be one of those patients in a couple of years when I've had my uh, diabetes type 1 for a while. I don't know. Now I'm going to do my best not to end up with a with a kidney that needs help, but I don't know that. Even if I take care of myself every day, it's a tough disease to work against. And I'm so happy, Andre, that you are doing what you are doing. And I'm also very happy that you took your valuable time talking to me and i hope that you will have a great world diabetes day which is the 14th of november every year uh, thank you so much for uh, talking to me uh, and uh, have a good day and please return to the research immediately uh, thank you and goodbye peter if i if i can say i'd like to thank you for the opportunity to talk about my research and uh, I, I somehow we didn't have time to talk about your foundation. I don't know whether we have time here that you can say two words or three words. What is the, your beaten foundation and what is the goal? Um, we are um, doing the same thing uh, as you are, working against uh, diabetes, which um, we have been doing for a couple of years in Sweden and we're going to continue doing that for many, many years because people are not aware of uh, what diabetes type 1 is and they are not aware of what diabetes type 2 can do to them. Uh, they think uh, normally that it is an easy disease to fight, but I know it's not. So uh, I am the one who is going to end this call and say thank you to you because you are doing much more than we do, but we try to do our best to beat diabetes every day. Thank, thank you, Andre. Much.